So now we spoke about a lot about security and compliance, but what exactly at AWS level it looked like, right? So what are the different yeah. elements uh, when it comes to the security and compliance for the healthcare products, the HIPAA side of things? So how exactly yeah. uh, we can map those, right? So for example, like uh, here, what we mentioned, the data, right? So we spoke about data at rest and transit. So what are the services that AWS offers? And just to for the audience sake, uh, all these services are related to AWS, but you can find the similar services in Google, like GCP or Azure. So it's just like uh, different names, but they do this, uh, this have the same purpose. Uh, so Kiran, why don't you quickly uh, provide us high level thoughts about each of these, like uh, what are these services look like? And uh, I believe yes, these are yeah. mostly we need to take care from the day one, right? Because as per the compliance needs, it has to be done. Yes, Praveen, yes. Yeah, I have seen actually a couple of healthcare projects uh, following, not following this compliance, though the development team and the management team has spent a lot of effort because of security checks and audit checks from the customer end, that projects did not move to production actually. So at the starting of the project only, we need to ensure all the complaints that has to be followed, especially for healthcare, when we say this HIPAA complaints, when we say uh, for this. So if we don't follow how much uh, NFRs we meet, how much functional requirements we meet, if the complaints is not followed. There are, I have seen a couple of projects in the past where they spent almost eight to nine months of effort, but did not went to production. And this has become a lo huge loss to the uh, uh, implementation team and even for the business also. So we need to ensure that properly all these complaints are followed. And when I was telling about this, first there should be an agreement with the cloud provider uh, from the customer end of point of view the kind of data that uh, being protected and uh, we should provide the data uh, related classification to the cloud uh, provider. And then uh, as a whole, AWS itself directly does not uh, tell that I will be protecting the compliance. So that is not the responsibility of the cloud provider. Correct. The cloud provider provides a managed service where the application team or the business can utilize these services in order to ensure that their data compliance is not violated. Actually. So AWS has numerous services and it is a responsibility of the application team or the product owner team to utilize these services and follow the compliance. So, so for that, for example, when I was telling about these compliances, data addition, data in transit, so we can leverage the uh, storage related things like uh, RTS, S3, and leverage KMS for the custom management of the uh, managed key management solution uh, or the for data encryption. And similarly, we can leverage AWS certificate manager for the SSL certificates during the data in transit. So, so our when we when we design the architecture and when we start implementing, so we have to consider these components. And again, uh, whoever doing in the other clouds, there are equivalent components uh, in GCP and uh, in uh, in Azure. Uh, for example, Amazon S3, we can have cloud storage in GCP and uh, Azure blob storage uh, in Azure. Like that in EC2, we have uh, a computing engine in GCP and uh, uh, Azure virtual machine in yeah, Azure. So like that actually. And uh, similarly, uh, that is for encryption. Then another thing is I was just telling about the authentication and authorization also most important. That allows only the authorized users to access the data and prevent the uh, intruders are the tamperers in order to not to access that uh, user data, PHA data mainly. And there should be some proper predefined admin policies also should be defined. So for that, we can leverage AWS IAM that protects the AWS resources for authorizations. Uh, Cognito that manages the user pool, or we can even leverage the OAuth2 related uh, things with uh, certain mm -hmm. open ID providers or uh, the oh, enterprise cool. managed uh, LDAP, yes. Managed enterprise managed LDAP servers. Uh, that has single sign-on capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, that is another thing. And then firewalls and network security is most important at the BPC level, at the BPC endpoints. And I was selling all the protected data stores, uh, the compute stores should be uh, stored in the private subnet uh, so that uh, no one can access the data and it will be accessible only from the resources that are present in the particular BPC. And uh, audit logs are also most important. That will allow us to monitor the your users and also if we can implement A and ML, we can also predict the behavior and then we can expect the risk that is coming actually. 
so for that we can leverage cloud trail or cloud watch and even uh, we can use centralized logging that uses open search aws open search so which is actually elastic search version and even the backup and disaster recovery is also most important in order to protect the data in case if any uh, server crashes or some like that uh, so we can use glazier for archiving the files and then uh, ebay snapshots uh, so these are the uh, disaster records and route 53 we can leverage in case if the primary uh, uh, zone fails route 53 can redirect the request to the secondary zone which is a disaster uh, i mean uh, which is a disaster i mean we can say disaster recovery zone we can, we can call it as a secondary zone actually. Uh, so in that way, actually, we can use this and uh, provide our security and confidence. Uh, 